Thanks for tuning in to our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an Amazon FBA business for sale in the home and kitchen niche. Created in May 2015, this business makes $3,437 per month in net profit. And the listing number for this business is 41023. Now, we do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the sites they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Thanks for coming on, Sean. All right. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Before we dive into the questions, I just want to give a quick summary of the business for everyone out there listening in. As already mentioned, it was built in May 2015 as a monthly revenue of $11,165 with expenses sitting at $7,728 for that net profit of $3,437. Now that is over a 12 month average and included with the sale of the business is the domain, the site content files, Amazon seller central account, as well as the social media accounts such as Facebook that's 10,000 likes and Instagram with a little bit over 9,300 followers. So Sean, all that being said, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, definitely. So I come from a fitness background and my brother actually introduced me to Amazon the FBA and I knew if I were going to get into this, I wanted to kind of be in the health and fitness niche. So when I was researching products, I was looking for something with high profit margins, low competition in regards to reviews and just something I could scale really quickly. And that's kind of when I fell upon this product. That's great. So it was something you already had some interest in. You found some competitor gaps that you could leverage and helping the product into people's hands. So now for someone that is looking at this business and maybe they're not familiar with Amazon FBA, could you just briefly describe maybe in a couple of sentences how Amazon FBA is making you money? Like how does your business primarily make money? Yeah, I mean, so it's pretty straightforward to be honest with you. I mean, I just, I place an order through Alibaba. They send it to me. I send it to Amazon. And that's pretty much about it. It's honestly a very hands-off business. The only thing that you really do have to, I guess, be on point with is like customer service. Fortunately, I don't have very many issues with customer service. The product is pretty good. And I'm not just saying that because it's my (laughs) product. It really is. It's, I don't have a lot of problems. It's not an electronic or anything like that. So it's great. So mainly the only thing I really run into in terms of like running the business is placing orders, like reorders with my supplier and just respond to customer emails. And I'll occasionally ask for reviews for my product. So with it being a pretty hands-off business, why are you selling the business? Why not just keep it and grow it? Well, I have another business that predominantly takes up most of my time. And if I had to be honest with you, I kind of, I'm getting rid of it for two reasons. I have a really difficult time like focusing on two things and I'm not good at multitasking. I couldn't focus on the Amazon business and really scale the business the way it can be scaled. And also I just would like a down payment for house, which I'm looking into. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very cool. You're going to use the capital from the sale to uh, put it into a down payment for a house and focus on your other projects. It sounds like. Absolutely. That's it, dude. Very cool, man. So when you first started this business, like so you source the product, it comes from China, from America, wherever, to the Amazon warehouses, it's live, the product listing is ready to go. What was those first few weeks like for you? What was the trajectory of the business? In the very, very beginning, when I first placed the order with my supplier, it was a little bit slow because we had to do giveaways. We had to kind of like spike the Amazon algorithm in order to get my product to the top ranking. So I wasn't making any money in the very, I would say, maybe three or four months. But after that, it was kind of smooth sailing for the most part, just because I put in the work in the first three months or so. Right. So much of these kind of businesses are really front loaded on their creation, right? So when it comes to your traffic of how people are actually finding your product, is it all like Amazon organic? Are you doing PPC? I know you have quite a large social media following, it seems like. Are you getting a lot of sales from Instagram and Facebook as well? I'm not getting very many sales from Facebook or Instagram. The majority of the sales are organic. I would say that's 90% of the sales. Now, if I really wanted to go ahead and take this to another level, I would turn on PPC ads. I am not running any PPC ads at all. I haven't been doing it for a while. And the only reason for that is because I have a 500 per day limit on my credit card. And that's Ah. all for the other business. If I really, really wanted to, I could probably get another credit card, but it's just one of those things where I just haven't done it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. 
How stable are the earnings? Is there any seasonality with the business? It's honestly pretty stable. The one thing I am going to miss is Christmas absolutely murders it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, Christmas time with my product does extremely well. I think this past Christmas, I brought in like $30,000 within a three-week period. And wow. I was considering even keeping the business for Christmas alone. But, I mean, the, I kind of explained I like a down payment on the house, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Is there only one SKU? Are you selling just one product right now? Yeah, so in the very beginning, I sold one product. It was just one color, and that's what all my competitors were doing as well. It was just kind of one color unit. So that was one of the reasons the business started kind of taking a decline is because my competitors were actually evolving. They were adding different SKUs and variations. And again, I wasn't putting the type of effort that was needed into growing this business, so I just left it alone. As of recently, as of the last two months, I actually added three other variations to the actual product. And again, so sales have increased because of that. It's increased by about roughly 10 to 15 units per day. Nice. Very cool. And in terms of shipping, are you supplying your product from China? Is it coming from America? Where's your factory at? Yeah, so it's coming from Ningbo, China. And then from there, we throw it on a boat and the boat takes it to the States and then goes straight to Amazon's warehouse. Okay, cool. So you're shipping by sea. How often do you have to reorder your products? Do you have a kind of a system in place that says like, okay, I'm at this point, now it's time for me to order this much product, or is it mainly more still on gut? It's kind of on gut, to be honest with you, because for the last few months, sales were kind of slowing down with the exception of Christmas. And then since I've added the new variations, sales have increased. So I'm actually going to probably place another reorder within the next maybe two to three weeks. Excellent. Let's pretend that you were going to, you know, hypothetically keep the business and you wanted to grow the business. What would you focus on that you'd consider the least risky path to grow the business? Least risky. I would go ahead and add maybe one more variation, which is very doable. I would get another credit card so I can turn on the Amazon ads. Something else I would do that's pretty powerful, I know my brother's doing this, and I've spoke to other successful Amazon sellers, I would get my page brand registered, which basically allows you to go ahead and add images and descriptions, just makes the page look much more professional, and it increases conversions. In addition to that, I would probably also do giveaways again, which I haven't done for a few years now. Excellent. Is there anything you would do if you were just incredibly risky and just wanted to grow the business as quickly as humanly possible, that'd be different? I would, let's see, if I was, I would probably do a giveaway then because that way it would spike the Amazon algorithm and just launch me higher in the rankings than I already am. What do you think the biggest risk is to a business like this that a buyer should be aware of? It just needs the love and attention that it needs. Like the biggest risk is basically, to be honest, doing what I'm doing, just kind of leaving it alone, <laughs> giving it any attention. That's probably the biggest risk because yeah. now you're not actively growing the business. You're just letting it do its own thing. And your competitors are probably actively, you know, trying to grow their business and try to scale it. Yeah, that's definitely one of the issues. You don't want to be so hands off that your competitors get the hand up on you, right? So. Exactly. When it comes to what you're doing right now to maintain the business, though, what are you doing on a weekly or monthly basis to maintain the business as it currently sits? Honestly, not really doing anything. I probably spend at most anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour per week on the business. And that's just responding to customers' emails. Like I'll get maybe anywhere from three to five emails per week at most. And then it's just, that's pretty much about it. That's all I do. Or and I'll, sometimes I'll check my rankings in Amazon. I'll just type in my keyword and just see where my ranking is. And that's it. That's all I do. Is there any skills you suggest for someone to have before they buy a business like this? That's a good question. I'm not sure how to answer that. Any skills? I would say maybe familiarize yourself with Amazon FBA. That's maybe buy an Amazon course, an Amazon FBA course. There's tons of online courses you get. Maybe that's something you could do. Yeah, I think that's actually a pretty smart idea. If someone's totally unfamiliar with Amazon FBA, is a good primer. Moving into some wrap-up questions here, would you be willing to commit to a non-compete? Yeah, absolutely. It's not a problem. And how much support would you be willing to offer that buyer? I have zero issues offering support. I mean, I don't mind jumping on Skype and telling them what I would do if I was trying to grow the business. Excellent. Now, obviously, the best case scenario here for you and for Empire Flippers 
someone comes in and buys the business for full list price. But that being said, would you at all be open to say someone saying 80% down and 20% over a period of a couple months or maybe after hitting some kind of training support or something like that? Is that something you'd be at all open to? Yeah, absolutely. I have no issues with that. Excellent. Cool. I have one final question for you, Sean, but before I ask you it, I just want to do a quick summary of the business again for everyone that is out there listening in. As I said at the top of the show, this business was built in May 2015, has a monthly revenue of $11,165 with expenses sitting at $7,728 for that net profit of $3,437. Now that is over a 12-month average. Included with the sale of the business is the domain, site content files, the Amazon Seller Central account, social media accounts such as Facebook with 10,000 likes and Instagram with 9,300 followers. So all that being said, Sean, my final question for you is, what is your best pitch in 30 seconds or less on why someone should purchase this business? You know what? I would say if you want a business that's already up and running and you're prepared to go ahead and give it maybe anywhere from three to five hours per week in terms of just kind of love, just give it the attention it needs, then it there's no reason this particular product can't be one of the top products, which it was. It was actually one of the very top products for its category when I first launched the listing. And again, I let it slide by the wayside. Yeah, I think this is definitely an opportunity for someone who you know, kind of do it yourself, Dave kind of person who comes in and fixes all the issues and gets the hand over the competitors instead of just letting, you know, cash in the passive checks, right? So definitely a cool little business. For everyone out there, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want more information, the link will be below this video that will take you to the marketplace listing. Now, if you're watching this on the actual listing page and you want more information, you can become a depositor today. It's super easy. All you have to do is click the button, make a deposit, and you'll be given everything you need to review this business. So, Sean, thank you so much for coming on, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Great. Thank you, Greg.